I hope everyone is back from lunch and had some coffee too. So now we continue today's conference and now we will have a presentation together from Scania and DTL in Denmark. And it will be opportunities and problems with cross-border transport. And it is about the Transport Lab project. And presenting are Mikael Stärke, who is coordinator at Scania, Jan Björklund, managing director. And then from DTL in Dan Denmark is Finn Bjerreman, who is technical consultant there. So please, I think it is Mikael who will start to talk and then the other ones will continue. So please, Mikael, you can start. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us to this conference. Um, Scania Transport uh, Laboratorium. Uh, we have some some five years experience of uh, operating a dual trailer combination in Sweden. And we would like to, uh, to operate this also cross border uh, within Europe. Uh, we'll come back to that. Uh, and like we have uh, heard before, uh, there are some, of course, some challenges uh, to in order to do that. Uh, but there are also some big environmental benefits to use the dual trailer combination. Um, and currently, uh, the, the dual trailer concept is discussed intensively in Denmark. So that's why uh, Finn will tell us a little bit more about that. But first, I will start off with a short presentation of what Scania Transport Laboratorium is. Um, so this company was uh, formed in 2008, uh, and we are a transport company. So we are not we are not actually a laboratorium, as the name name might indicate. Uh, we are a fully owned Scania company, and we transport goods and passengers for Scania only. Uh, and regarding the passengers, we transport uh, Scania employees uh, from Stockholm to Södertälje every day. Uh, the fleet sizes, we have about 40 trucks or two axle trailers, and we have 130 trailers and five coaches. Uh, we are uh, 57 employees, uh, most of them drivers, of course, uh, and then we have also some 30 hired drivers from a consultant company. The turnover is about 175 million Swedish crowns. Uh, the purpose uh, with uh, this company is uh, actually to increase Scania's ex knowledge about their products and services in real life. So we use the Scania trucks and we use the Scania organization and services and then we report back uh, to Scania um, uh, how things are actually working in re real life, so to say. Um, we are also a, a platform for, um, for early testing on both new products or components uh, and services in the real transport environment. So we are a, a part of, of the logistical flow within Scania in, in real life. And uh, we are also uh, we are also aimed to be a, a sort of a showcase for uh, being a, 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 a sustainable transport system using renewable fuels and uh, new techniques and so on. So that's the main purpose of, of, the, of the company. And uh, we are a, a sort of a semi-commercial transport company because we are competing with other suppliers uh, for certain uh, transport tasks and uh, evaluated in 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 comparison with other transport companies. Um, the operation is, uh, we have two legs, I would say. Uh, the first is the, the local distribution in Södertälje, uh, where we drive components, transport components, between the different production units within Södertälje and the close area. Uh, there are some, some 22 tractors in that operation. And this is the more of is a short distance, more of a distribution like transport. Um, and we use re renewable fuels only and uh, some new te techniques in this operation. Uh, but historically, the, the biggest 
sort of a testing platform we have been in, it's in, in the in the long haulage traffic where we transport goods from Södertälje to Svalle in Holland. Um, we transport uh, axles and gearboxes uh, from Södertälje to Svalle and on the return trip we have some uh, uh, components from uh, painted components from 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 Meppel outside uh, close to Svalle, and we are also bringing back uh, packaging material. And uh, this is the 24/7 operation uh, where we have uh, 14 tractors, uh, and the annual distance for this is quite substantial. It's 400,000 kilometers every year. We have about 90 trailers and about 48 drivers uh, performing this. Uh, every day we transport eight trailers per day. Also in this uh, operation we aim at uh, using renewable fuels only. It's a little bit uh, difficult to, to, uh, to get that uh, outside Sweden, uh, but uh, we have also, because we, have, we are running the most of the trucks on A300, uh, and we are actually having a cooperation with a Dutch supplier, so we can also refuel HV100 in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, so as you see, we transport, we drive a lot of kilometers every year so that we can uh, evaluate uh, new components and uh, services uh, within a quite short amount of time. Uh, in this operation, we also uh, uh, operate two uh, dual trailer uh, combinations. Uh, and as I said, we are only using this one in Sweden, and then we, we drive it from Sretelje to Malmö. Uh, and then in Malmö, we disconnect the second trailer and uh, attach a tractor on that one. So we go from Malmö and downwards with a single tr tractor trailer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shall we talk a little bit about the vehicles? Okay. So about our uh, HCT combination. Uh, our duo trailer. Uh, we have based this on uh, standard uh, standard vehicles uh, that are commonly used. Uh, we have a, a, a two axle trailer, a four by two, oh, sorry, tractor unit, and the three axle uh, mega trailers. Uh, and uh, Connected to that, uh, we have a, a, a dolly, a two-axle dolly, and a, and a second um, semi-trailer. Um, the, the, the basic thinking behind our combination is that we can use the standard components we, that are used for uh, the, the main operation in, uh, in Europe. And uh, we can uh, take the longest uh, distances on the good roads with this and then we can do the last mile uh, disconnected with single trailers um, and um, we have uh, a special permit to do so in sweden we have the permit for uh, 32 meters and uh, the the maximum weight of uh, 78 tons we are not using uh, that uh, to uh, to the full we can get up to 74 tons and on the return freight, as Mickey was mentioning, we have uh, lighter material when it's uh, painted components. So we are usually on a gross combination weight on 41 on the return going north. Uh, we run, of course, in uh, 80 uh, kilometers uh, per hour. And um, if we look at uh, the, the special adaptations that we, uh, we have done, Nikki, if you can change the picture for me. Perfect. There, great. So the adaptations that we have done, uh, 
this is now referring to the to the latest permission uh, in the beginning the first years it was uh, some, there were some more uh, adaptations that we had to do but the, the very latest is that we have uh, the long vehicle signs the 32 meter signs in the in the front of the tractor and in the back of the last trailer uh, we have set the speed limitation to uh, 80 that uh, means that uh, the speed limiter is actually fixed at 80 uh, compared with uh, the, the the standard setting which is at 89 uh, we have fitted uh, snow change, this type of on-spot that we can activate uh, from the dashboard uh, on the tractor units. And uh, we have uh, on the back of uh, the first trailer, we have the same type of uh, trailer connection as you have for a pool trailer, uh, the connection for the dolly. And uh, so we have gradually built up that uh, on our 90 trailers that we're using in this operation. So uh, step by step, as uh, we have uh, replaced uh, all trailers, we have specified them all with this um, towing device. And also on this first trailer, there is a foldable uh, rear underarm protection so that you can reach in with the tow bar for the, for the dolly. We've done this in uh, over over five years. <clears throat> uh, over this time, we have uh, uh, had a different type of technical tests on on the vehicles, and uh, we have um, very good experience. We have the privilege of running a fixed route. Um, it's scheduled transport. Uh, we have uh, depart fixed departure times. We have organized with. Um, uh, the the shunting of the of the trailers we have uh, rented um, a space for uh, the connection and disconnection in um, both ends so here in Södertälje we have it in our facilities and in uh, Malmö we have it at uh, at the terminal close to the bridge so we have we have definitely some uh, privileges we have also the the ro roads that we're using the E4 and the E6 uh, that suits us very well for this. Uh, over the time, we have found that it seems to stabilize on a 25% uh, reduced fuel consumption or 25% uh, less of CO2 emissions. And uh, we have also, of course, a good uh, cost saving on this with, on, with one, one vehicle less on the road. Should we change picture? If we look into um, the experiences that we have, uh, it, it's really only uh, very good uh, and positive experiences. Um, the the challenges that we have uh, or have had uh, is that uh, in the winter time uh, we have uh, to make sure that we have our starting the areas where we do actually the starting when we get started they have to be well prepared uh, from from snow and sanding uh, so that is a challenge and um, uh, here in Södertälje uh, we have to enter the uh, the motorway the E4 and there is a sharp corner around the, the Circle K station uh, which has sometimes been a challenge but since we the the, uh, the these uh, snow chains that we can activate from the dashboard is, is working much better. Um, also, uh, you have to be careful when you uh, when you take your rest uh, in the winter. Uh, tires are warm, and uh, if if there is ice, they they can easily. Uh, um, well, you should not uh, stop the, the combination in uh, in an uphill. Make sure that it's the, an even surface or level surface. Uh, the coupling of the dolly and trailer uh, to do that uh, takes time especially the first time but 
but um, uh, when it's done a few times, it's not uh, not uh, at all difficult. It takes some space. You, you are, we are considering that we need something like a, a 50 meter long area and some four meters wide uh, to do the connection. And as I said, we, we rent the space in, uh, in Malmö for that. Uh, and uh, other than that, it's really easy to uh, to drive. Um, you need to look uh, look around when you when you park uh, at the service area so that you don't have to reverse. Uh, we usually, uh, as it is, we we tell, take help from each other and they make sure that there there is a a good space where we uh, where we park them. Uh, we usually use the same uh, rest areas. And also in uh, rare cases, there could be some limitations in following the traffic diversion. But um, our experience is that where you can go with a 21, uh, with a link, with a 2525, 25, uh, we can easily go with this also. I, our experience is that this takes less space than the 2525, actually. So we feel now that we have done this with so good experience in Sweden, and we we would now like to extend this. And of course, our uh, dream is that we could go all the way uh, to solar in a connected combination. So uh, we do it to Malmö. We would like to to uh, continue to uh, to Rödby, go with the ferry, uh, go from Portgarden to the Dutch border, from the Dutch border, and all the way to Svolle. That would be uh, our dream. Um, we we do Sweden, uh, and uh, we have some. Uh, some challenges uh, to go further. Um, the road design and capacity, we know it would be uh, very easy for us to continue over the bridge and uh, the road to uh, to Rödby uh, would not, look from looking at it, uh, would not give us any, um, any real challenge. Uh, we have of course to look into where should we do, if we break it up, if we have to break it up, if we can't go, uh, connected all the way. Uh, we have to look for um, good areas where we can do the uh, disconnection and connection of them. But we have also the legislation in uh, in these four countries. And we know that we have um, a very positive response for this in, uh, in Holland. So um, I think that uh, Holland would probably uh, be easy for us. We know that we will have more challenges to go through Germany uh, with uh, their 44 ton uh, limitation. Le the length uh, could probably be um, agreed upon, but uh, the, 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 the 44 tons will be difficult. But uh, now um, we would like to, uh, to try it through Denmark as well. But I hand it back to you, Mika, and continue with our savings. Yeah, because there's a, <clears throat> there's a huge saving potentially using these kind of uh, vehicle combinations. Um, I'm waiting for the slide to change. So. What would be the annual effects if you we, if we in our operation go from using 14 uh, tractors uh, traveling 400,000 kilometers a year to using half and uh, using double trailer combinations uh, instead? Uh, here we can see the CO2 emission per section of the trip: Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and uh, another Netherlands. Uh, we have some 1800 tons uh, emissions in Sweden, etc. And then we end up at 3,900 uh, 3, tons annually running on European diesel. If we would make the same transport uh, with the dual trailer combinations, we would 
save some 450 tons uh, of CO2 emissions in Sweden. But if we could come down to uh, or run operated down to Svol and back again, then we will end up at 2,900 tons of CO2 and actually save 25% or 975 tons. And uh, that is quite a lot, I would say. Uh, and just to get an indication, if we divide this figure here, uh, the total here with, with 100, then we have uh, grams per ton kilom kilometers. So this operation will be some uh, 39 grams, and this is 29 grams. Uh, we would also like to look into if if we also, in combination with this, use renewable fuels. In our case, the HVO100, then we would uh, end up in the total uh, CO2 emissions at 850 tons instead of 3,900. Uh, and that is actually 8.5 grams per ton kilometers, and that is a reduction of 78% and about 3,000 tons in CO2 savings. So I would uh, conclude saying that, that the dual trailer combination is very important for reduction or reduction of CO2 emissions, and it's also very important. Uh, to, oh, if, you, if we could uh, use it in combination with, reun with renewable fuels, the impact will be quite significant. And it's, for us, it's also very important to, to, to be able to use this in a cross-border traffic. Uh, so uh, as soon as possible, we would like uh, to have a, a, a European legisl legislation, legislation that uh, allows these vehicle combinations. But as Johan said before, uh, uh, we would like to, to start testing in Denmark. Uh, so I will, uh, and that is Malmö and Toriadi in our case, so I will uh, leave the word to, to Finn to, to say some, have some comments about the current status in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, hello, Finn Bjarman from uh, Dansk Transport Logistik. Um, yes, um, you can shift again. Yep. We have looked in the report from the government climate partnership in Denmark, and it's it appears that uh, double trailer combinations with up to 34 meters is also one of the, the possible solutions in Denmark. And uh, we can learn um, from the experience we already have, have in Finland and Sweden. Um, there will uh, definitely be a greater CO2 ga gain compared to uh, the current combinations. And uh, there are already suggestions along the, the, to try it. Shift again. Um, some estimates have already been made, which show that there is a possible emissions reduction of 110,000 ton a year. And that's a lot. So, um, yeah. You can shift again, yep. Um, Danish government, Department of Finance, is calling in proposals from the transport industry. Climate Partnership for Inland Transport already asked for longer talk. We have members uh, who are ready to, to uh, drive with a double trailer uh, in standard length tomorrow. So uh, we are uh, waiting for permits. Thank you for listening. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. And that is actually all from us uh, today. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you to all of you three who done this together. I think it was very interesting. We have time for one or two questions. If it is someone, I don't think we have any through. No. So is it someone here who has any question? Yeah, okay. 
Uh, hello, Jerke Fögen here. Thank you very much. Very interesting. And uh, Finn Bjerreman, you know that we talked to each other uh, earlier this year. And my concrete question now is what will happen now? Are you, are you coming further to, to make up a concrete uh, project uh, proposal or what, what, what is in, in, in the pipe? You are muted now, Pin. You are muted. Yes, um, I can't hear you. So now we hear you. Uh, I can't tell so much uh, exactly now, but um, something is happening, and uh, we hope it will uh, it will run uh, uh, in the near future. That's all what I can say today. But uh, in the last week, we have heard something, and uh, I think it's good news. We applied for a dual combination in Denmark and we got the answer that we could not apply since it was not allowed, so there were no process. So what you mean is that the process is starting now then by the government? Or? We hope so, I can say. So uh, that's, that's all what I can uh, say exactly now. I'm not sure, Martin Freeman, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Do, do you have any comment to the questions here and also to Finns? Do you know, is it any process? Because I also heard this, but there is no process for handling these oh, trials or projects. Do you know if it has started to happen? No, as I said before, we know that the, the business has, has uh, uh, come up with this uh, proposal, and uh, but, but it's, it's, uh, it, it, it contains a process uh, with a political discussion and a decision further on. Uh, that's all we know uh, so far. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> oh, it is a question to you, Mikael. And is to, how, for how long do you have permission for this transport you have in Transport Lab? Uh, the permission ends at uh, the end of 2022. Uh, thank you. Well, now I think we have taken all the questions, so we should continue with the next 